Do you have any hobbies? Hobbies? What's that? <laughs> Hi, I still haven't found my superhero superpower yet, but I believe I'm uh, known as the slave to my children. Ask me anything. My name is Ru. I'm 37 years old and I'm the MP for Bangkok and Sengkang GRC. My favorite part about Bangkok really is the people that you know we meet. I visited one of the preschools and you know the children there were absolutely amazing. Uh, we had this um, Q&A session where each class got to ask me some questions and I just remember one of them came up to me and asked me why, why does the government have to collect taxes and this is a five or six year old. I hope I gave a, a satisfactory answer. Um, but you know it's just the little things like this when, when you're out in a community, when you're meeting the community, you're meeting the part, everyone, the different partners and the stakeholders. Um, for Sengkang Town Council, it's a bit different. Um, we've got two managing agents at the moment. But you know, I think the focus really is getting together the team and keeping their best interests at heart. Um, getting them all together, making sure that all existing and uh, you know, new, new incoming staff and also the MPs um, work together to make sure that the, the, the setting up the Town Council is a smooth one. I think for women in Singapore, a lot of the time we struggle with um, trying to have it all, trying to do it all. Because, you know, I think especially for my generation, we've come up with this notion that we are, a are very capable, you know, we're as capable as men, but maybe at the same time, we're expected to be responsible for everything that happens at home, domestic chores, carrying responsibilities that primarily falls upon women. So we end up in this situation where we feel pulled in a thousand directions at once, and there's a lot of guilt um, because we feel that we're not doing it properly. Um, and you know, I think for new mums especially, uh, when the arrival of a new baby, you're really unprepared for it. Um, I remember when my first child was born, I was talking to uh, my cousin, uh, my cousin's wife, who was actually one of the first women, Singaporean women on Mount Everest. And you know, she had a baby and around, around the same time as me. And I said, look, but you've climbed Everest before. And at which point she replied, actually, I think uh, climbing Everest was easier than having to look after a baby and bring up children. I think for me, um, it's just getting the right support structures in place for women, uh, whatever they want to do, whatever their ambitions in life, whether it's going back full time to work or working out some flexible working arrangements. It's helping employers to understand that, you know, having a flexible working arrangement in place is not something that necessarily results in a loss for the company and for the employer. And in fact, it actually opens up a whole um, field of human potential for mums who maybe or, or car carers or just women in general who feel that you know they, they might not be able to commit to a full-time traditional working arrangement so I think that's one. The other one is really just thinking about some of the mindset, some of the more traditional ways of thinking. Women are sort of pigeonholed into a certain area, a certain uh, domestic sphere and um, you know, I, I, I really hope that you know, we can put in place some policies or, or just, you know, just uh, uh, encourage a change of mindsets where you know, a woman is seen for who she is as an individual, not by the fact that she's a woman. Well, I mean, I, I think you know, having live streaming of parliament and you know, having these videos uh, available in full after that, uh, that can only add to transparency, greater transparency. There's no pitfall, I think, um, because you know, it's out there, it's on the record, and it's easily accessible. It brings our democratic process, our lawmaking process, closer to people who are interested, and hopefully that can break down some of the barriers for that. The danger, if, if you want to put it that way, uh, of playing to the gallery and you know, sort of uh, optical politics and showmanship, the, the videos always, have always been there. Um, you know, I think we just should be careful not to you know, put too much uh, emphasis on that. <laughs> a balanced democracy. Um, I think a balanced democracy is one where we are free and able to disagree respectfully with one another, but at the same time work together to come to a consensus, which hopefully is uh, for the benefit of society and the country as a whole. Um, I think I'm, I really hope that in the next 10 years we move towards a Singapore as uh, being one where we have a less stressful environment for our children, um, less emphasis on high stakes education uh, and high stakes examinations. Um, and you know, just a place where our children can really be children 
and enjoy and just have fun as they're growing up. Apart from that, you know, I think I would like to see more equality of opportunities um, for people from more disadvantaged backgrounds. Yes, we, we are a meritocracy, but there are some barriers in place uh, to, to actually stopping them from actually fulfilling uh, their fullest potential. Um, and I think finally, I would like to see a Singapore that is uh, a lot less dependent on fossil fuels and very pollutive uh, you know, energy sources. To the residents of Buangkok, I just wanted to thank all of you uh, for your patience. Um, you know, the town council set up, for example, has, uh, has taken you know, a, a bit of time and I want to thank you guys for your patience and also um, for the, the, the warmth and the welcome that you've uh, displayed to us. And um, I really look forward to meeting more of you and getting to know you even better in the years to come.